Hey guys, we just got out to the lake here. We are all set and cozy up in the shack and uh, we're getting to that prime time golden hour here. But before that happens, I wanted to give you guys a little rundown. Of some of my top favorite walleye baits, ton of different baits in the ice fishing world. And sometimes you don't really get a good look at a lot of them because there's a lot of different baits. So today we're gonna show you guys what they do. Just for a reference, uh, we're in 20 feet of water. All these baits are gonna be filmed on six pound test line and we're gonna see what they look like how they perform, and yeah, just get a good look at um, these baits in action under the ice. So let's get to it. So how I have these baits laid out is starting with the most aggressive baits to the least aggressive baits. I usually start with them when I first get to a lake just because it's good to try out the most aggressive stuff because that's when you can really have those days where you just pound them as these rattle baits or this jig wrap, for example, like I have here. Starting with this rattle bait, this is one thing that I like to use for either big fish or calling in fish. It's a great bait to really, I mean, you can make a lot of ruckus. You can see it in those underwaters. When you really rip it, those rattles are just cranking down there and it really calls in fish and it typically gets the bigger fish too compared to a lot of other baits. So that's a great bait to start with. Next up is the old classic jig wrap. Anytime that I'm out walleye fishing, I almost always have one of these tied on. It's just a bait that cannot be beaten. It's been around forever. And it's, again, I would consider it in the more aggressive category just because it's the same thing as this um, rattle bait that you can really work this bait and really get it to dance around and do a bunch of movement and really call fish in. But you can also work this bait. You can just kind of slowly just dance it in place and you can tip it with a minnow head too if you're doing that just to really entice those fish a little bit more. Just a step down from that rattle bait but still a bait that allows you to get aggressive with it or tone things down if need be. Next in the lineup, coming down to the spoon category which I would consider kind of in that middle zone between real less aggressive if you have fish that are just real moody and are not really aggressive and between the really high fast action baits is that rattle spoon. This, it's the same kind of thing. I can still get aggressive with it, but I can also just do the same thing, just barely just dance it. As you can see in the underwaters with that minnow head, it just kicks underneath that bait and has a really cool action. But you can also rip this thing and you can hear that rattle in it shaking down there. And so that's also a good subtle fish calling device not quite like this loud rattling bait, which can sometimes get a little bit obnoxious if you have fish that are real moody or if you're in clear water. But then you can still call fish in, and then once they come in, you can tone it down and really entice those fish into biting. So, so going down the line after the rattle spoon, I'd go with a flutter spoon. So the difference between this and like that rattle bait is this bait obviously has no uh, noise system in it but this is really just about action. On the underwaters, you can see that this bait, when you rip upwards, it really has a flutter to it, like in the name. And that's a really cool action that a lot of baits don't do. And now looking at the underwaters of this bait, this was one thing that did shock me a little bit, was noticing that it does have a really good flutter on the way up on your rip, but on the fall, it didn't flutter very much. And now that's one thing to keep in mind when using these different baits in different depths just to see the differences um, in what, what the lure may claim that it does um, and what you may think it does. It's just something to think about when using these baits. Up shallow, I'm sure that this bait would have a great action on the way up and the way down, but with that deeper water, uh, this bait just didn't quite have the flutter on the way down, which is just fine. In certain scenarios, that can really key in to a certain bite, having that action when it comes down looking like a dead uh, dead perch or a dead shiner coming down. Next up is your slender style spoon, I would consider it, or just a flat spoon. This bait I would put on the uh, less aggressive side of most jigging type style baits, just because when looking at the underwaters, you can see 
that it doesn't really do much. Now this is a bait that I really go for when walleyes are being really finicky, uh, very pressured fish, that subtle, subtle action with just the minnow head tipped on the end of it there. And as you can see in that underwaters, that minnow head just kind of just dangles back and forth. And that can be a really good look for fish that have seen a bunch of different baits, have seen these more aggressive tactics, can really help you get extra bites or on those cold days when they're just not aggressive and they just slowly want to chase after something. This bait just has little action and that can really come to play. And then last but not least is the good old dead stick. So what I have here is just a plain old octopus style hook and then just a typical split shot weight. And it's really simple to use. I have one set up here and I'll show you the system. All it is is just that little hook where all you gotta do is just hook a little shiner, or a fat head, a little sucker in the back where they get to swim freely, they have that good action and then you put your split shot anywhere from I would say six to eight to a max of 18 inches above your hook. When you have your split shot too low to the hook, you kind of limit the action of your minnow and it doesn't just look as natural when it's up higher. But if you have it too high, you can give that minnow a little bit too much range and he can get tangled in your line. So anywhere from about six to 18 inches is that perfect length for your split shot. And this is just a great system. Like I said, when those fish are just real sluggish, don't want to eat a lot of moving baits. And it's also great to just have on the side as your second rod too. So there's a rundown of some of my top favorite walleye baits through the ice all the way from the most finesse tactics to some of the most aggressive tactics. So hopefully that helps you guys out with any scenarios that you might face on the ice this winter.